What's up YouTube, how are you doing? This is Mr. Tybox123 and in this video we're going to be doing a direct comparison or reverses between the Dell XPS 15Z and the Apple MacBook Pro 15 inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through 10 different rounds and then we're going to add up the totals and we're going to see who wins. One point each for a win or one point both to both of them for a draw. So the rounds I'm going to go through are number one, design, two, display, Three, we're going to look at the noise, heat and fans. Four, the keyboard, trackpad and webcam. Five, we're going to look at the Windows Index score and also Geekbench. Number six, we're going to look at the operating system and any preloaded software. Seven, we're going to look at some gameplay and some frame per second rates. Number eight, we're going to look at the ports. Number nine, we're going to look at the battery life. And then ten, we're going to look at the actual price. And then I'm just going to finish up with my actual opinion uh, of the verses between these two laptops. So on the left hand side we've got the XPS 15Z and on the right hand side we've got the MacBook Pro. So before we start let's just look at some of the basic specifications of these two laptops. The XPS 15Z has got an Intel Core i7 dual core running up to a turbo boost of 3.4 GHz and then the MacBook Pro has got the Intel quad core Sandy Bridge i7 running at a standard 2.2 GHz. Both of them have got 8 GB of RAM and typically they would both come with a 7200 RPM SATA hard drive. However, my MacBook Pro has been upgraded to a SSD hard drive and I'm also going to be doing a review on that at some stage in the future. So let's just head into round one here and talk about the design. Now obviously Dell have taken somewhat of an approach of trying to replicate the MacBook Pro to a certain degree and just add their own little design elements to it, but it is very fairly similar looking to the MacBook Pro. Now the XPS 15Z is a very attractive laptop and obviously so is the MacBook Pro. They're both very well designed, both very well built and both overall look very nice sitting on the desk. However, in this round I'm going to have to give it to the MacBook Pro for these reasons. The quality of build is just that little bit better some of the smaller design features like the perforated grille around the speakers and the battery indicator are just that much better designed and manufactured and engineered. The keyboard looks nicer on the MacBook Pro. The border around the screen looks nicer on the MacBook Pro in the fact that it's flat and it doesn't have like a sort of bezel as such. It's just literally one big flat piece of glass. And just generally the MacBook Pro is just a more attractive looking laptop. It's slightly smaller and also weighs slightly less as well. So round one here is definitely going to go to the MacBook Pro, so that'll be one point there to the MacBook Pro. So let's just head into round two here and talk about the display. The XPS 15Z has a full 1080p display and runs at 1920 by 1080 p on an LED panel, and the MacBook Pro runs at 1600 by 1050 and that was also an upgraded option on the MacBook Pro when purchasing it. The default one comes with a slightly lower resolution and is also an LED display. Now in terms of the actual quality of the displays themselves, the displays are fairly similar. In fact, they're almost completely equal other than the fact that the Dell one is very slightly brighter and also is obviously a full 1080p panel. So in this case, I'm actually going to have to give this round to the XPS 15Z as the higher resolution screen and the extra brightness really does just give it the slight edge over the MacBook Pro. Now let's head into round three, and we're going to talk about the noise, the heat, and the fans. When these laptops are just doing day-to-day -day work using Office applications and browsing and Wi-Fi and the various things that you would do on an average day-to-day -day basis, neither of these laptops kick out very much heat or noise whatsoever. However, when you start doing some more intensive work, both of these laptops do kick up a lot more heat and sound that come out of the fans. And in fact, when comparing the two, the MacBook Pro actually gets quite a little bit hotter than the XPS 15Z and also makes quite a little bit more noise than the XPS 15Z as well. So again, in this round, I'm actually going to have to give this to the XPS 15Z due to the fact that it actually stays cooler and actually stays quieter regardless of the circumstances you're actually using it in. So round three here is definitely going to go to the XPS 15Z. Now let's head into round four, and I'm going to talk about the keyboard, the trackpad, and also the webcam. And when we take a close look at these, 
The XPS 15Z uses the island style keyboard and so does the MacBook Pro which has obviously been using it for many many years now. But when you're actually using the keyboard, the MacBook Pro keyboard definitely feels a lot nicer and a lot more easy to use and fast to type on than the keyboard of the XPS 15Z. The keys are just very much slightly more nicely laid out and they also have a much nicer feel to them, a much more solid feel. Whereas the keys on the XPS 15Z do feel just a little bit spongy and a little bit plasticky. When talking about the actual trackpad, for me there's no comparison. The one piece glass panel in the Apple MacBook Pro 15 inch is vastly superior to this trackpad here that we've got on the XPS 15Z with still the old style of having the two buttons at the bottom. Not only is it less functional, it's also less attractive. So let's talk about the webcams as well. We get a full HD webcam in the MacBook Pro, whereas we just get a 1.3 megapixel standard definition cam in the XPS 15Z. So in fact, on the actual keyboard, the trackpad and the webcam, the MacBook Pro wins out in round four here, and the MacBook Pro is gonna win round four so the point there is going to go to the MacBook Pro. Now let's head into round five and just talk about the Windows Index and also the Geekbench score. And let's just take a look at these Windows experiences. Processor, the XPS 15Z gets a 7.1 out of 7.9 and the MacBook Pro gets a 7.5 so those extra two cores there beating the clock speed that's extra on the XPS 15Z. In terms of the RAM on the XPS 15Z comes in at 7.5 and also exactly the same on the MacBook Pro so leveling themselves out there. If we look at the desktop performance for Aeros in terms of graphics we get a 5.5 on the XPS 15Z whereas on the MacBook Pro we get a 6.9 so significantly higher on that score. When looking at the gaming graphics we get a 6.6 .6 on the 15Z and on the MacBook Pro, we get a 6.9. So again, that's been beaten there. And then, like I say, the hard drives, we can't compare those because one of them is an SSD and one of them is just a normal SATA hard drive. However, I did check the SATA hard drive index rating on this MacBook Pro, and it's also a 5.9 as well, so that would have been equal. So in terms of the Windows index rating, the MacBook Pro slightly wins out, and that's really in terms of the processor and also the graphics. So now let's just take a look at the Geekbench score and see how that comes up. Now the Geekbench score doesn't take into account for hard drives, so these should be equal comparisons. And the XPS 15Z comes up with a Geekbench score of 6,766, and the MacBook Pro comes in at 10,911. So a huge difference there on the Geekbench score between the two devices. Now both of these laptops are running on battery power, so it's a fair comparison, but the MacBook Pro really does completely kick the arse of the XPS 15Z in terms of the Geekbench score. And with that, alongside the also the Windows Index rating, we're definitely going to have to give round 5 to the MacBook Pro. Now let's just head into round 6 here, where we're going to just talk a little bit about the operating system and also the preloaded software. Now in terms of the operating system, Obviously the XPS 15Z is restricted to Windows. The MacBook Pro obviously comes natively with Mac OS X, but you can purchase Windows 7 and put that on in boot camp and then it is capable of running the two. Now obviously in that scenario, the MacBook Pro wins out because it's got the option of the two operating systems, but then you could say, well, we could run Mac in a VM also on the XPS 15Z. So what I'll do to even it out a little bit more is I'll, we'll have a look at the actual inbuilt software that comes with both of these devices. Now Windows itself, obviously we all, we all know the, the sort of inbuilt software that comes with that and there's really not that much in there that you can do very much with, it's really just for running the base operating system. With the MacBook Pro you get iLife 11 which incorporates GarageBand, iMovie and also iPhoto. Now if we just even forget about iPhoto and just talk about iMovie and GarageBand, that really does give it the edge in terms of software and Windows really doesn't provide anything like that free of charge and neither to Dell with this laptop. So in terms of round six, the MacBook Pro has to win out in terms of operating system and software. Now let's head into round seven and this is gonna be the gameplay on both of these devices. Now I've installed Fraps on both of these and we've also got Crisis 2. And we're just gonna have a quick look at the frame rate between the two when we're running them on exactly the same settings. Now in terms of the loading speed of the game, 
The MacBook Pro is going to win very easily because it's got a SSD hard drive, but the actual frame rate shouldn't take that into account, so it should be an equal test. Now I'm just resuming my game here and we'll get some idea of the frame rate between these two machines. So the XPS 15Z, I've set the resolution to 1600 by 900 full screen, V-Sync is off, and then the system spec is gamer. On the MacBook Pro, I've set it to 1680 by 1050 so very slightly higher there, full screen, uh, V-Sync off, and also in the gamer mode. And in fact, what we can see here is that just doing some basic moving around in, with the XPS 15Z, it's actually running at between 28 and 32 frames per second. If we do the same on the MacBook Pro, just move around a little bit, it's actually running at around a dead on sort of 27, 28 frames per second. So very, very similar, but the XPS 15Z does have just a slight edge. So in this round, we're gonna to have to give that to the XPS 15Z. Now let's just go into round eight and we're gonna be talking about the ports on both of these devices. Now in terms of the XPS 15Z, what we have is we've got an HDMI port, a mini display port. We've got two USB 3 ports and also an eSATA port along with an SD card reader. And then we've got a optical drive on the other side along with an ethernet port on the back. Now the MacBook Pro has got an ethernet port, a Thunderbolt port, a Firewire 800 port, two USB ports and an SD card reader. And then also again, an optical drive on the other side. Now the XPS 15Z has got the extra functionality of having the USB ports and also the HDMI and the eSATA but the MacBook Pro has got the Thunderbolt port, which is faster than USB 3 and can also be more flexible in terms of its uses. However, at the moment, there's no devices for Thunderbolt, so the more functional of the extra ports on these devices at the moment is definitely with the 15Z. So the 15Z is going to have to win out in terms of the ports. So round 8 is going to go to the 15Z. Now round 9, which is going to be battery life, very simple round. The MacBook Pro, I find that I can get at least five, six, sometimes seven hours out of just doing normal work. And the XPS 15Z slightly less. When doing more high intensive activities, the MacBook Pro battery also lasts a lot longer than the 15Z. So round nine is gonna to go to the MacBook Pro. Now round 10, we're gonna talk about the price. The base model 15 inch MacBook Pro with a two gigahertz quad core processor comes in at around £1,500, whereas this model of the XPS 15Z comes in at around £1,000. Now, although the specs aren't identical, the extra couple of cores on the processor on the MacBook Pro and also the extra resolution and screen and slightly larger hard drive capacity on the XPS 15Z, they do kind of equal themselves out. But the MacBook Pro is definitely significantly more expensive than the XPS 15Z. So in terms of price, again, the 15Z is going to have to win out in that round, being much more economical and probably even more value for money. So in terms of the actual score, let's add up the points. And it actually comes in at five points versus five points. And in all fairness, that is actually a fairly decent score. The MacBook Pro does have the edge over the XPS 15Z in many, many ways. But the 15Z really does fight its own and fights its corner very well especially on the price side. If you only require a Windows machine and you don't specifically want a Mac, then the XPS 15Z is definitely going to be a lot more value for money. And that higher resolution screen really does come into play when you're factoring in the kind of experience that you want. It's a much, much nicer screen to have that higher resolution. So in terms of my opinion, but what one would I have if I had to pick? It's very simple for me. Everyone knows I'm a bit of an Apple fanboy. I would actually have the MacBook Pro. And that's for a number of reasons. The design and the aesthetics are just that much nicer than the Dell and also having that operating system as well does make an extra factor for me being that I like using OS X personally for what I do. However, I've got to say, Dell really have done a fantastic job with the 15Z and if you are looking at buying both of these, unless you specifically need Mac or you need that slight extra amount of power, then the XPS 15Z really is a good option. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe for more and I'll see you all in the next one.